Rule number five, the reflexive pronouns sui sibi seise and the possessive adjective suus are used to refer to the subject of the sentence. A reflexive pronoun is one that bends back to the subject, meaning that it refers to the same thing as the subject. In the phrase ego me specto, me is technically reflexive because it's referring to the same thing as the subject, ego. Both are the first person singular. We change the subject to tu, though, and the me isn't reflexive anymore. So ego and tu are first and second person personal pronouns, and we use the forms of hic, ille, or is for the third person as the subject. But when we need to reflect back onto the subject with a third person verb, we use a different pronoun, this one. Well, there's no nominative, so I usually refer to this with its full declension, sui sibi se se. There's no nominative because this pronoun is only used reflexively. That is, it's only used in sentences in the oblique cases to refer back to whatever the nominative is. As I like to put it, sui sibi se se is the same as the subject. The alliteration here of sui sibi se se and same and subject helps bring the point home. Let's see this in action. So you can't use sui sibi se se with a first or second person subject. So no ego se specto, but you could say Marcus se spectat. Marcus looks at himself. If we wanted Marcus to look at some other guy, we could do any of these like Marcus eum spectat. This can also be feminine. So Claudia se spectat works for Claudia looks at herself and sui sibi se se can also be plural. Here's a dative from Aeneas, inde sibi memorat unum laborem. Then he recalls to himself one labor. The to himself is the same guy as the subject. Cicero suggests that virtue loves herself in this phrase from De Amicitia, omnino est aman sui virtus. Literally, altogether, virtue, or virtus, is the lover of herself. If we have a prepositional phrase with cum, the cum appends to the end of the se to create se cum, just like with me, te, nobis, or wobis. That legion which Caesar had with him, ea legio, quam caesar se cum habebat. The him here refers directly back to Caesar. This concept is really important in indirect statement, where English is vague, Latin is very specific. In this phrase, Marcus dicet se Claudia mamare, Marcus says that he loves Claudia. The he is the same as the subject, so Marcus loves Claudia, or so he says. But if we change se to eum, or hunk or illum, it can still be translated Marcus says that he loves Claudia, but now it's a different guy, not Marcus. Likewise, Marcus putat brutum pecuniam sibidare. Marcus thinks that Brutus gives money to him. The to him is Marcus, reflecting back to the subject of the sentence. As we get more and more complicated in direct statements, though, this use of sui sibi se se versus like a, an aum or aom becomes very important. Related to this is the possessive adjective suus. It too can be both third person singular or plural, and it's always the possessive subject. Milites ad castra sua radierunt. The soldiers returned to their camp. Claudia librum suum capit. Claudia took her book. Note that we don't use the genitive sui here, but the possessive adjective. That's a pretty hard and fast rule. But if we wanted to have a different third person possessive, we would use the genitive of another noun or pronoun. Milites ad castra eorum redierunt. The soldiers returned to the camp of those other people. Claudia librum eius capit. Claudia grabbed his or her book, not her own. Thus, rule number five. The reflexive pronouns sui sibi se se and the possessive adjective suus are used to refer to the subject of the sentence.